As an installer, you know the importance of having the right tool for the job. I'm sure that every installer watching this already has wire crimpers, a cordless drill, panel removal tools, and a digital multimeter. Or at least I hope you have a digital multimeter. But what all do you need in your toolbox to install and tune a DSP? Well, let's roll that intro and find out. How's it going everyone? My name is Dan and today we get to continue our talk about DSP. If you have not seen our first video on what a DSP is yet, check the link down in the description. In this video, we're going to be talking about the tools needed to install and tune a DSP. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tools. We're going to start over here on my left. So this is an RTA. Uh, an RTA is called, stands for Real Time Analyzer. Now there's going to be multiple ways you're going to be using an RTA. Now the, this setup here is a little more on the higher end using a laptop with software called True RTA. It's a software that you do purchase with a microphone and then a USB sound card. Now the USB sound card is what allows the microphone to connect to the laptop. So this is set up for doing acoustical measurements. So you would use this when your system is up and running and playing and you need to do level adjustment, EQ, and listening to the system. That's what this setup is for. Now there's another form of RTA for electrical signal analysis. So when you're measuring your speaker wire signal, your low level signal out of your DSP, out of a aftermarket head unit or anything like that, you can get a system like this to do it with some extra parts, or you can use something like this, which is called the DMRTA by Audio Control. This is a great device because it actually has everything you see here built into one. And in the next video, we're pretty much just going to be using this guy, but there's multiple tools you can use to get all the job done. So in this guy, we're going to have the ability to do acoustical measurements like you're seeing here uh, using a microphone. You can also do electrical uh, signal analysis, which we're going to be going to go over deeply in the next video. Uh, another tool uh, that's very handy and everyone should have is an oscilloscope. Now, the oscilloscope is also uh, a way of measuring distortion. Now, there are also distortion detectors out there. Pretty much what you're doing here is you're looking for the distortion or clipping point of an amplifier or source unit, anything like that. This is also a multimeter, so it'll actually give you your voltage readout as well as uh, being able to look at the waveform and visually see when the signal is clipping. Uh, these are a couple wire probes here. That's uh, uh, just for easily connecting into sock wire so you don't have to cut them and splice them. We can just tap right in for testing. This is a phase checker. Everyone should have one of these. You can actually pick these up on Amazon for about 20 bucks. Uh, this is a really simple tool that allow you to go around and make sure that all your speakers are in polarity or phase. Um, you just go around to each speaker grill, hold the button, play polarity pulse tracks, which we'll get into the uh, source material here in a minute. And this will tell you if you're in phase or not. Pretty simple. Uh, another tool over here, this is more for the tuning side, is a tape measure. Everyone has one of these. Uh, then now there's going to be multiple ways of measuring delay or time alignment in a DSP. The simplest one is to use a tape measure and then a formula, which, uh, Here's right here, which I'm sure all of you know by, by heart, but uh, we'll put it down in the description for you too. These formulas are used to actually uh, calculate time in milliseconds, and uh, that's more of a tuning topic for another day, but uh, tape measure is a handy tool to have for uh, tuning a DSP. So a couple other things needed. Uh, one is a notepad and a pen. Whenever you're doing a signal analysis and you're going through and you're measuring multiple channels of a factory amplifier and you're learning what speaker wire colors are there, what kind of signals in that wire, what kind of uh, clipping point it has, everything like that, it's a really good idea to jot all this stuff down and keep it in tra keep track of everything. That way, whenever you're hooking a DSP up and you're doing your install, you're not freaking out and uh, having to relearn everything and wasting a lot of time. This keeps everything organized, clean, simple, and it saves you a lot of time. So these are pretty much free. Uh, always have one, always have this handy. Another thing that's free and you probably already have anyway, your phone. Your phone is actually an amazing tool for uh, tuning uh, a DSP. So there's a lot of apps out there. Some of them are free, some of them aren't and they'll actually get you up and running. So like, let's say you don't have the money uh, for an RTA right now, but you need to just look at something. 
there are free RTA apps on your phone. Now, they're not going to be nearly as accurate as this, but in a pinch, it's something, right? There actually is a phase checking app. Take it for what it's worth. I don't know how accurate they are, but in a pinch, uh, I know I've actually used one before, uh, and it's, it's helped me figure out a phase problem in a car. And also, uh, with stuff like the DMRTA, um, having a phone or an iPad, there's an app uh, that allows it that you actually connect to this, and it's so much easier to use that way. So that's uh, one use of it. The other use for your phone is all your source material. So like back in the day, we always had these auto sound CDs, the Sheffield lab discs, and everything like that. Now, then you start ripping them to flash drives. That way, you don't you just have them all there because CD players and cars is uh, not to not very common anymore. So. Uh, one suggestion I make is take all those tracks, put them on your phone. There's almost always a way to connect your phone to whatever system you're tuning. All your tracks are there. Um, if you have like a, a streaming service like Spotify, actually a lot of those Sheffield Lab Disc and test tracks, you can actually find them in Spotify. So even if you don't have these discs, just with a little bit of effort, you can find a lot of those tracks. There's a couple of other apps that are useful for uh, test tones. There's actually a signal tone generator uh, that I found for iOS phones. I'm sure there's one for Android too. Uh, that was free and that's really great for finding distortion points of amplifiers. And another app I really recommend is the Educar app. Uh, this app is awesome for tuning. It'll actually give you lots of pink noise tracks, sine wave tracks, everything like that. It does cost a little bit of money, but it's totally worth it. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Pretty short video this time. Uh, hopefully, it was helpful in you uh, preparing for your next DSP install. If it was helpful, go ahead and toss it a like. We really do appreciate that. And while you're down there, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. Next time, we're actually going to be uh, getting our hands dirty, and we're going to be integrating a DSP into a vehicle with a factory amplifier. So we're really going to look at signal analysis, how to use those signals, how to sum everything, and get the DSP up and running. So your next step is tuning. We're gonna get all the way uh, to that point. You don't wanna miss that one. Once again, my name is Dan, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.